Hi, this is Alessio. Hope you're well, and I hope you're having a good weekend. Many of you have been asking me, hey, Alessio, can you please do analysis of XRP, Ripple? Because we haven't talked about XRP for some time. So in this video, I'm going to deliver on that promise, and I'm going to show you my full wave count on XRP. By the way, this is not the full wave count. I'm going to show you that in just a few moments in this blurred out section on my chart here. So you will see my full wave count and my potential targets for XRP in just a few moments. So guys, join me in this video as we talk about the wave count and XRP and the potential targets for 2022 and 2023 on Ripple. Thanks very much. Join me. All right, guys, welcome back. Now, before we talk about the potential wave counts, the long-term wave counts, in fact, the full wave count picture on XRP, which by the way, this is not it. And before we talk about the potential targets for XRP for this year and next year, let me just say a few, a few things here. Number one, it's actually quite an interesting story. As I flew to Orlando, Florida this Christmas, uh, this is actually just a few weeks ago, as a matter of fact. And as I was going through immigration uh, in Orlando, the guy at the immigration desk who was checking all the passports, we were actually having a conversation, a really friendly conversation about Ripple and crypto in general. And he told me that his biggest holding was actually in XRP. He's probably watching this video right now because he asked me if he could watch my videos. Uh, by the way, he's a really terrific guy, really nice guy. So again, he said to me that he was very bullish on XRP. And again, I'm only mentioning this because it's quite, it's quite interesting that a lot of folks out there uh, are really not just into Bitcoin or Ethereum, but they have also a strong interest in other altcoins, for example, um, again, cryptos like XRP or Cardano and so on and so on. So before we go on to the actual main analysis and the potential wave counts and targets, let me just say two very important things. You will notice there's some lines here on my chart. And again, you'll notice, first of all, there are these red lines here on my chart. And there's a silver line right here at 0 0.8. Now, why have I put this on my chart? It's quite important for you to know this before we continue. Number one, in any analysis that we do, any correct analysis should always have, this is quite important, let me write this down. Any correct analysis has to have the point of maximum risk, okay? So risk. And that is why I put these red lines on my chart, okay? Because essentially, these lines you see here, by the way, is a 0 0.48, 0 0.43, and what I'm saying is if XRP, and it's an if, by the way, which I'm not expecting, but if XRP was to drop below this key level of support, again, 0 0.48, 0 0.43, then I can no longer have a strong confidence in what I'm going to show you in this video, in this particular wave count I'm going to show you in a few minutes. So that means you need to remember that what I'm going to show you in this video, the potential wave count, only carries a high probability as long as XRP remains above this support at the 0 0.48, 0 0.43 level. Because if that level breaks, I should say it's an if, but if XRP was to break that support level, then forget it. This wave count would no longer be valid. In fact, I will have to change my mind. And that actually would mean the odds of the wave count I'm going to show you in this video and the potential targets would significantly reduce. Okay, so always bear in mind the risks and the key point of invalidation. Okay, every analyst needs to do this. Every correct analysis needs to have a point at which you need to say, nope, at this point, I'm likely wrong. So what I'm saying is, if XRP, and it's an if which I'm not expecting is going to happen, but what I'm saying is, if XRP was to break that support that you see here at the 0 0.43, 0 0.48, then essentially the risk increases significantly to the downside, and the probabilities would change also in the opposite direction. Okay, so that's what I'm going to say here in this video. First of all, you will also see another uh, level on my chart. That's the silver line you'll see here, a uh, silver gray line right about here at 0 0.8, as you can see here, 0 0.8. Now that level is important, of, is an important level of resistance. And what I'm saying is that level has to break before I can say that the odds have significantly increased in the upward direction. And therefore, what I'm saying is that in order for this particular wave count, I'm going to show you in a few minutes, to increase, I would first also need to see XRP confirming that and increasing the odds by breaking that level of resistance at 0 0.8, essentially 80 cents. Okay, so now we've covered that. Let's go on to the goodies. Let's go and cover uh, the actual wave count. So what, what you're seeing here now on my chart, guys, is the complete wave count for this year and next year. So what can we say about this chart? This essentially means that for the last several years, from 2014, XRP Ripple here has been in a five-wave move. And let me just point this out here so we can actually see it. So there's our potential wave one in the white numbers, then the wave two correction. And notice the wave two correction also was composed of the smaller ABC wave counts, as we can see here. And then we had the major wave three rally that we can see here. 
which by the way also was composed of five smaller waves that we can see here. Let me just point this out. So one, two, three, four, five. And then essentially when wave three topped here uh, back in 2018, then we had a major correction, essentially as we can see here, that's the wave four uh, correction. And then since then, we've essentially been in this wave five. Since the beginning of 2020, we've been in this major Again, larger degree wave five, and this larger degree wave five is gonna potentially take us significantly higher by the year 2023, likely to our target, which I'm gonna mention here in a few minutes, that essentially would be at the 8.7 level here that you can see here. And by the way, there is another level above that, but this at the moment carries for me the higher probability. By the way, within this wave five, within this larger degree, wave five, as shown to us in the white count, there are smaller waves. We have to remember that in Elliott wave theory, each wave is composed of subwaves or smaller waves. Again, remember that Elliott wave theory is a bit like Russian dolls. Every larger doll contains within it a smaller doll and then a smaller doll and so on and so on. This is because of chaos. Remember that Elliott wave theory embodies chaos theory and chaos theory teaches us fractals. So markets are fractals, okay? And again, we'll talk about this in a separate video, but I'm sure you understand what I'm saying here. But anyway, Let's go and talk about the subwaves within this wave five. That essentially means within this larger wave five in white that we can see here, then we've got the subwave, the minor degree, the smaller degree waves, that essentially would be the yellow count. So wave one, wave two. By the way, you may recall, wave two is the big crash that we had last year in 2021 when that major bad news came for XRP and everybody just panicked. And by the way, you may recall, the bottom of that wave two was where we got bullish on XRP. If you've been watching my videos now on XRP since last year, you will know that major crash that we had in the beginning of last year in 2021 was where we got bullish on XRP, around about 0 0.17 cents approximately there, okay? So that was the major wave two correction. And then since then, we've been this larger wave three. And by the way, within this wave three, which is likely to head to about $4, uh, within this wave three, we are experiencing a correction. In case you're wondering, that would mean that within, let me, let me actually just remove these lines here because it's quite, uh, it's a bit quite messy here now in my chart, but let me just show you. So what I'm saying is within this larger degree, wave five heading to about $8.7 here on XRP, we have these sub waves on the balance of probabilities. I think we've completed waves one and two here, and we are now currently in this larger wave three, which by the way, this larger wave three in yellow, in other words, the wave three of five, which has not yet completed, I think we are now in the wave four correction, the smaller wave four uh, correction, uh, okay? Let me just put it out here for you. So what I'm saying is, I think that uh, quite likely we are, so if this is uh, the smaller, smaller wave three and four of this larger wave three in yellow, I think we're completing the wave four here, which actually makes sense as well from an ABC structure as well. If you actually have a look here, this would mean this is our likely, let me just draw that on the chart. Essentially, this would mean A, B, C. By the way, I'm not saying the C wave of this correction has completed yet, okay? So we don't know that just yet. I would say that if XRP was to get above 0 0.8, then the odds would increase that the C wave correction has likely completed, but we're not there yet. So let me also mention uh, something else here. In order for this wave count to be correct, and in order for this, in order for this particular perspective to be right, again, I, I know I'm repeating myself here, and I know some of you say, unless you're repeating yourself, but look, it's important because let me just repeat one more time that XRP Ripple has to remain above this support in order for me to have confidence in this particular wave count. Otherwise, forget it, because then I would be wrong. So if XRP for any reason drops below the support, 0 0.48, 0 0.43, which again, I'm not expecting. I think it carries a lower probability, but if it does, then forget it. Then risk would increase, okay? Risk would then increase significantly to the downside if XRP was to break that support, which again, let me say, I'm not expecting it to happen. I'm only saying it because remember, we're dealing with probabilities, not certainties. If you want certainties, then I suggest go and do something else, okay? Because in the markets, when, you, when you're dealing with analysis, when you're dealing uh, with price action and any market, you're dealing with probabilities and risk. You're not dealing with certainties. And I know you know this because I know you're intelligent and sophisticated people, but again, you do get these newbies and inexperienced folks who watch these videos and they think it's all about certainties 
and what you can know for certain, and it's not. It's not, okay? Technical analysis is all about three things. Possibilities, probabilities, and risk. This final point here. That's technical analysis. It's not about predictions. It's not about a crystal ball, all that nonsense. Okay, let's continue. So here's my point. I believe that currently we're tracing out a smaller degree wave four correction within this larger wave three, within this larger wave three, taking us potentially by the end of this year, maybe towards the second half of this year, potentially towards four dollars. Okay, and now I know what you're probably thinking. Some of you are probably thinking, oh, wait a second, Alessio, that can't be right. Because if this is a wave four correction, if this is wave four correction within this wave three, then surely in Elliott wave theory, wave four cannot overlap with wave two. Well, that's correct, but remember guys, that's confusing the two wave fours. Remember, this wave two that you see here, if this is our wave one and two, okay, this wave two is in yellow. This is the yellow count. This is a minor degree wave two in yellow, which means the correct wave four we should be looking at is not this one, this one. This is the one we should be looking at, okay? So if this is our wave three going to about $4, then I think we'll experience some kind of wave four correction. As you can see, this particular potential wave four is not going to overlap with this wave two. There are no overlaps here, as you can see. So we must not confuse the wave counts. The corresponding wave four in relation to this wave two is over here. It's not this one over here, okay? I'm hoping this is very clear. So essentially what we're saying is that I think from a probabilistic perspective, I think we're likely here. Let me show you. This is the Elliott wave model. And I think from this Elliott wave model picture, I think that we're likely here. So if we're in this larger wave five, the larger wave five taking us likely towards the $8 mark on XRP, I think that quite likely we are currently here within this wave three structure. If waves one and two have already completed, as I showed you in yellow, so let me just do that one and two, then I think we're likely in the, yeah, still in the middle of this wave three uh, Elliott wave picture here, okay? So going back to our chart now. So here's the bottom line. I wanna to get to the end of this video. So essentially what we're saying is, one more time, I think we're likely in the wave five, the larger degree wave five in XRP. And within this, within this wave five, that's likely going towards the $8.7 mark. I think we're likely still within the uh, wave three. Again, one, two, three heading towards about four dollars and then a likely wave four correction and then i think we could complete that wave five maybe the first half of next year in 2023 to about 8.7 dollars to complete the entire five wave move here on xrp now i know some of you who are ultra xrp fans are going to be disappointed and going to say oh alessia come on man 8.7 or eight dollars that's too low so just to please uh, some of you ultra xrp fans which i would say by the way i don't know i don't know why eight dollars which, by the way, let me say one more thing, by the way, guys. This particular wave count only carries a high probability, and I'm going to say it one more time, but it's important. This wave count and this target for XRP at $8 only carries a high probability as long as, firstly, two things must happen. Two things. Number one, XRP must remain. It has to remain above 0 0.43. So remember, if XRP breaks that level, which I'm not expecting, I think carries a low probability, but if XRP was to break that level, then forget it the odds this wave count would be reduced significantly and risk would increase significantly the downside. So that's very important. XRP must protect that support between 0.48 and 0.43 to increase the odds of this potential. The next condition is XRP must break that resistance at 80 cents to persuade us that we're heading higher. So the reason I put that 80 cents level there, that 0 0.8 level here, is that XRP must persuade us. It has to show to us that it wants to go higher by breaking that level of resistance, okay? If 80 cents breaks, if XRP manages to break that level above 80 cents in the next few weeks or months, then the odds increase for our higher probability wave counts, as we can see in yellow and in wave five, towards higher levels, okay? So two important things I need to mention here as we move on. Now, again, for those of you who are ultra XRP fans, okay, if XRP was to exceed this level of resistance at 8.7 or $8, then if it was to actually move above that level, okay, the next key level of resistance above that or the next potential target for XRP would be at 28, okay? Approximately this purple magenta level you're seeing here. So what I'm saying is if XRP 
was to continue pushing above the eight eight point seven dollar mark, then okay, the next resistance above that, the next potential target by the end of or the middle of twenty twenty three perhaps would be at twenty eight dollars. However, guys, I don't have a lot of confidence in that particular target at twenty eight. I just think it's rather unlikely, but again, we shall see. But actually, I feel a bit more comfortable uh, with this more modest and conservative uh, potential target here on XRP. At that level, we're seeing at the green line on my chart, about $8.78. I think that's more reasonable uh, personally. Uh, I think that's what I got in this video. Guys, let me know what you think. And let me also say, guys, that if you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe uh, to these videos. And also, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section. I would love to hear your feedback. Thank you very much indeed. Have a great weekend and I'll see you guys in the next video update. Bye for now.